Oh my, well, don't you look dashing. <laughs> oh, you think I'm talking about myself? <laughs> I'm talking about you, Bobby. Oh my god, Bobby, I can smell that nice smell anywhere, Bobby. I know you, Bobby. You're a beautiful bean, Bobby, and don't let anyone else tell you otherwise, Bobby. Anyway, good evening. The rest of Lottie's Lost and Lazos, whatever you can observe when I make this video for Bobby, I guess. Today, we're gonna do something beautiful that we haven't done in a little while. We're gonna do our slash insane parents. Bonkers stories, insane parents, all the kind of stuff that comes along with it so we can feel that we're here for each other and calling out weird behavior where we find it. Enjoy. Mwah. Wait, I got something in the mail today. Hold on. Albert, don't go anywhere. I'll be back. I got this in the mail today. Check this out. I'm like a movie star for plushies. Wow. I'm, we're the, with the fan favorite plushie person. Stuffed. We're so stuffed. <laughs> Get stuffed today. Get a... <laughs> Get an emotional support team. Ah, <laughs> uh, people pay for my marketing. That is amazing. Thank you all so much. This community is more than I could ever ask for. It is mind blowing. Thank you so much. Okay, before I start crying, let's read memes, okay? We can cry about other things later. My community is like an onion, it makes me cry in a good way. My mom spends my credit card to the limit, then refuses to pay it back and cusses me out over the phone for asking her to pay it. Madre, screw that, I am not going to be talked to like that, I never told you to shut up. I guess don't call me or speak to me the rest of the time I'm here because I don't deserve to be talked to like poo, so just leave me alone. And I don't deserve a lecture from my 23 year old who's living rent free, bill free. So here's a bunch of transfers, minus $30, minus 570 bucks. You just, you just spent $600 on someone else's credit card without asking? That's, that's a pretty big purchase not to ask anything about. It's not like, oh my god, I borrowed $2 from you. It's like, no, this is, that's pretty big. I was trying to talk to you, but you won't ever have a real conversation. It's much easier to blame you for everything. We will pay all the credit card off and I guess drop the classes to what you want and we will pay those, but that's it. To talk, you tell me to shut up, shut the F up. Great way to have a conversation. Your son runs a smokehouse next door but isn't in college, but you never borrow his money. Oh, you're complaining about your kid when they're literally a student and then also snag their money? That's a, that's a little weird. I'm in school and actually trying to get my life in order and you've taken almost every penny I've made since I was 17. So I'm guessing you're like 18, 19 at this point from what I read from this. It is ridiculous. I didn't even say that. I said shut up only. <laughs> Got him! I have two Whitney w witnesses. I don't give a poo anymore. Just take all my money and cuss me out every day, whatever. Just take whatever classes you want. Do only nine hours if you get what you want and show us what you get back and we'll pay it. But we aren't paying anymore. Starting fall of 2023, just so we're clear. You haven't paid any classes yet, so it's not like I'm surprised. No loss there. Plus, we put 3000 into savings to repay classes, etc. Padre makes well over six figures. You have zero reason to be so broke that you need all my money all the time. I just wanted to talk to you. I just wanted to have a conversation with you to tell you about my day, but you always cuss me out to make me feel like shite instead. I think maybe it's time to just disconnect your finances from your parents. That's probably a good idea if this is how they act about it. It's really weird to take money from someone without asking, especially your kids, and then it's like, oh my god, I raised you for free. Of course you did. You were the one who chose to have a child. Are you kidding me? No one cast you out. No one. I did say shut up, but that's it. I am dog sitting, so I should be relaxing, but I am pissed and crying because you can't let me enjoy anything. I wasn't mad or anything, but you yelled at me. I wasn't even being serious. I just jokingly got mad and then jokingly yelled. Oh, JK, JK, I joked about the money <laughs> too, I guess. Yes. <laughs> the excuse, it's just a prank, bro, is um, is a bad excuse at best, and <laughs> that includes this context. And if you want your kid to pay rent for living at home, like, it's not an unreasonable thing to do if they're an adult and they're living at home and that kind of stuff. But that's a conversation you should have beforehand as respectable adults, not like a haha gotcha moment when you just snagged money out of their account without asking. Like, that's not how you go about it. You can ask for rent if you want and everyone is an adult and blah blah blah, but not like this. This is a really weird way of doing it. Our future alligator wrestler. And yes, it's alive. Look at that, just a little toddler just wrestling with the gator. Okay, I'm gonna go wholesome route on this and be like, imagine this is an anime and they got to bond with their crocodile when they were a kid, you know, like dragon riders. And, and then they grew up together and it's super wholesome and they're cute. 
Uh, JK, JK, don't let your toddlers wrestle with alligators. I mean, the mouth is tied, but things can go wrong. What, what if the rubber is worn out and poopy? What if it scratches things or, you know, something else happens? You know, things can still go wrong. It's a wild animal. I got home before her after a Christmas party last night. She says I leave poo open routinely and that I'll be kicked out. Gosh darn! Did you know the garage door was open last night? You cannot live here anymore if you continue to leave doors unlocked and open, leaving me vulnerable and at risk. I never left the house last night and went into the house first yesterday from the garage. Don't gaslight me when I didn't do anything. Wait, so she came home last, but she's still blaming someone else for leaving the door unlocked? <laughs> That's like, how does the math work on that one? <laughs> Does she believe her kids just randomly go out through the garage in the middle of the night to pee in the yard or something like that? It's not. It's probably not how it works, fam. She's gonna be gobsmacked when you don't live there anymore, and she keeps finding doors left open. <gasps> Maybe it's the boogeyman, because it couldn't possibly be her. I have to giggle here. Years ago, I was living with my mom and her husband while in college. I had a bad habit of flipping on the stairway light while running up the step stairs and not switching it off once up there. My mom would grump about it. Honestly, I took the blame each time because it was an unconscious habit, although I knew it was not me all of the time. Six months after moving out, mom realized someone else was doing it too because, well, I was gone. Lol, for years, they would both chuckle and yell my name. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Leaving doors unlocked and that kind of stuff can be a real hassle and it can put uh, people and stuff at risk. So it is kind of a big deal at certain times, but but maybe <laughs> you know, the benefit of the doubt and all that kind of stuff and always not assuming it's someone else is, is a good thing. Maternal unit. Did you take my AirPods? You must have. Hello, answer now. I want them back now. It's a lot of exclamation mark because I'm very serial. Thief. Just one straggling text under your breath. <laughs> Thief! The Conquisition will find you- Conquisition? That's a new one. I did not. Why would I take yours? Oh yeah, sorry, I found them. Haha, <laughs> so small and stupid. You see, it's the- it's the headphones fault. It wasn't me forgetting them and lashing out at someone else. It's the head- they're, they're, they're tiny. They should make them much bigger so I don't lose them. Ooh, that's a good prank. You should buy something and tie it to the earbuds. You know, like a- like a basketball and just attach it with a string that can't be removed or something like that. It's amazing. <gasps> that's such a good prank. Password journal. Oh, is this like a little, like a little, what's it called? Diary, diary thing? I, I guess. That's really cute. It's such a cute little package. Getting this as a gift at 10 years old, having my grandma pry it open with a knife, then whoop my ass for having thoughts and feelings is my villain origin story. That is horrible. Why would you give your kid an anonymous journal just to snoop in it and then get pissed at him? Jesus, freaking highway to trust issues. Are you kidding me? I honestly wonder how many people don't keep a journal as a result of this. I rarely think of it as trauma, but never writing down your thoughts and feelings anywhere because you weren't entitled to privacy and punished for even making the attempt to have some lingering effects. That is so nasty. Even if it's not about like the biggest thing, just the feeling of someone prying through your stuff is so unnerving. I've had this happen multiple times in my own life, not specifically with this and journals, but it's a very similar feeling to like, for example, when people are obsessing over you or you have like a stalker or something like that, because you feel like anything you do is always like being really heavily investigated and it's a really weird feeling. And if it's happening under your own roof, in your own room with your own stuff, yeah, of course you won't leave stuff around. God damn, it just, it just teaches you to bottle things up and hide as much as possible. That's not particularly healthy. I myself stopped keeping a journal not long after starting because my mother read it. She doesn't know, I know, but I always would put some things inside the pages at specific positions and they were disorganized. I've started again recently and always, always keep it with me. Yup, I started a journal about some childhood trauma I was beginning to remember as a teen. And my parents read it and tried to force me into talking about it with them. I stopped keeping a journal after that. Oh no, that's, that's just overstepping with two levels. Number one, reading a private journal is a no-no. And then number two, just directly confronting them. Like, hey there, we read your public journal. Time to talk about this thing. You only are ready to like do yourself and write down that kind of stuff. If they want to talk to you about it, let them come to you. Or you like do something like, hey, we noticed you're bothered about something. Do you want to talk to you know, a professional about it? That kind of stuff. This is just, no, no. 
Hey mom, I have this app on my phone that takes a picture of whomever tries to get into my phone. I was just deleting the images and saw that you tried to unlock it four times on October 20th. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because I can. Oh my, what is that profile picture? This is, no, it's, no, no. Man, the theme of this video is just invading privacy, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. You know what makes a good parent? Making sure my child can have no secrets. Woo! Happy childhood! <laughs> what I find, I think, the most bothersome about all this invading privacy is that it's not even about serious stuff. You know, one thing, if your kid was hiding crack cocaine under a bed, then it's like, okay, yeah, maybe a slight invasion of privacy is in order. But, <laughs> you know, this kind of stuff. Oh, I'm writing a little diary about my crush at school. Maybe our son is gay! That is known Stan! Time for exorcism! It's like, no! God, it's such mundane stuff! Why? Why are you invading people's lives for this? God! Grandma refused to go to the doctor, ended up giving me COVID. Please go to the doctor. I don't want you to be sick, plus you'll miss out on Christmas things. When I was a kid, I was sick a lot around Christmas. <laughs> Tree emoji. And it's still not fun. <laughs> FYI, bleh, litter box needs cleaning. Would you get a bowl of broccoli cheese soup? It's not every time you're sick, it's when it's serious enough that you can't do anything for days, even walk a tiny bit. Oh, so you're basically flu bedridden and insist on meeting family for Christmas? Great. Focus. Focus. Don't focus on this face, focus on this face. That was actually a social norm I kind of liked about the pandemic. As soon as you're feeling iffy, don't go meet people. I am astounded for how many times through my childhood or with school or at work you're feeling kind of sick, but people kind of make you go anyway. And then bada bing bada boom, two days later, everyone else is sick too, because you just infected and want to be there for like two hours and then be sick anyway. It's such a stupid social norm, goddamn. So that was actually one of the things I kind of liked about the pandemic, I suppose. Just reasonable social norms, like wash your hands, <laughs> you know? The good little habits that I'm astounded we didn't have beforehand. I mean, I suppose people washed their hands before that too, but not, not enough. Fancy having an ungrateful daughter that can't even organize a nice, quiet Christmas lunch. <laughs> I mean, isn't this a time of the year of sharing and just spending time with loved ones and strangers? I would prefer to spend it alone than with her. Oh, gee, so you're making this a public stink post on Facebook? <laughs> Can't imagine why anyone would not invite you to Christmas dinner. That sounds, uh, what a mystery. The great mysteries of the universe. W what happened before the Big Bang? Is the universe infinite? Why is this woman's daughter not inviting her to Christmas lunch? Who wants to bet that her presence is what makes this family lunch is not quite? If I was her ungrateful daughter, I would remind her that this time of the year is for spending time with strangers, like she herself whined about being unable to do. Yeah, you, you're whining about it to strangers on Facebook. I mean, that's that's kind of in the Christmas spirit, isn't it? I have an aunt like this. Everything she does is a flex on Facebook and airs all her dirty laundry on there. Even to the point, the family had to ask her not to make posts about anything related to the shooting of another family member, as it would have affected a police investigation. I suspect this insane parent is the same, if not similar. I, I, I don't like that about Facebook. I remember the trends back in like 2009, 2010-ish, when it was always some person being like, Oh my god, all these fake backstabbing people talking crap about me. If you want to talk shit about me, you can do it to my face. And then everyone's just looking at it like, fam, you're doing this on <laughs> Facebook vaguely <laughs> without talking to them directly. And then you would always have some f***ing white knight in the comments be like, hey, are you upset? You want to talk about it? And then they always replied, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I just want to make a vague public Facebook post and <laughs> vaguely whine about people vaguely whining above me. <laughs> Social media, man. Absolutely beautiful. God damn. Telling my mom about my gender dysphoria was the worst mistake of my entire life. She's like this a lot by being a bigot and generally refusing to accept me. Oh, this is long. Okay. <clears throat> Karen voice warm up. Mama, last seen today at 0818. This is what I was talking about yesterday. First, it is rude to religious people. They want respect, but do not respect others. Second, how will this world survive without mother? How will they be born? Third, it is belittling to women and very often almost parody and mocking women. As a feminist, I see that women are more deprived for their rights. Oh, did you just admit to being a, uh, being a, what, what, what do you even call it? Tur turf? Is that what it's called? Jeesh. Fourth, they tried to be involved in groom kids and teens. Oh, 
Oh no, not this route. The most important, not their kids. They cannot have kids. What rights did they have to mess up with other people's children? They did not give birth, did not raise them, did not cry if kids sick, do not worry, they care less. Only parents feel kids' pain. I know that some of homosexual people do not involve into this. However, sex para pa parades and deliberate dragging young people into this. How is self-mutilation is good? It is normal for teens wandering quest and I see how some people taking advantage of this and ruining kids' life. Ask yourself if it's good. Why is it supposed to be a secret? It's a parade. Parades are not known for being particularly secret. What are you talking about? Company made this toys called Death by Toys. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh my god. I have never liked... The, well, all the arguments in this garbage, basically, but it sounds like you're going on a whole tirade, just like, oh my god, they're they're trying out a couple of pronouns. Oh, the world is on fire and families will explode. Jeesh. The whole, like, groom kids and teens never like that argument, because here's the thing. Whenever you have a social movement, something that becomes popular, whatever that might be, there's always going to be people that misuse it, that try to sneak their way into it, to use it as a tool to push their own nefarious BS. That always happens with anything. I mean, you have drunk drivers that, you know, get into cars and get into accidents and cause harm. Does that mean we should ban all cars? Probably not. You know, there's always going to be a few people that misuse stuff in this world, no matter what it is. And my issue with these arguments most of the time is that, well, if it wasn't this excuse they used, they would just do something else. Because the problem is with this individual person being a creep, not specifically with what they choose to try to justify the creepiness with. Because if it wasn't this, it would just be something else. It wouldn't change that person. And I think that's an important distinction to make, you know? And uh, I feel like people are just are not really doing that. They're just latching on to bad actors that use a generally positive movement to push their own nefarious crap and think that the whole thing is about that. When the fact is that no one likes these people. They're just creeps. Stop. I wish you all the best. Uh, people like this in your life is not fun. And it's not fun because it always escalates to, to a weirdly intense point. It's the smallest thing that sets it off and the whole debate just goes to this incredibly serious and intense plane where it's just, fam, I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I, I'm just trying to wear a different set of clothes or something like, frick, chill. Thanks for the call and saying I love you. Oh, <laughs> that never happened or ever will. Sorry, I've been running around all day and had some to drink and fell asleep when I got home. I just woke up and it feels pretty bad and hurtful to see this. I would have called you, but I fell asleep. Of course, I love you and you should know that. Sure, <laughs> yup, it's obvious. Sorry to hurt you and make you feel so bad. Got to be a bit of a C word to ignore your mom on Christmas Day when you know how lonely she is. Ooh, I wonder why she's lonely. Gee, couldn't, couldn't be, couldn't be, you know, all of this. Merry Christmas, Mom. Love you, too. Can't imagine why she's lonely. See? Too, too great the brains think of the look. Apparently, her phone doesn't make outgoing calls. She has to wait for you to call her. That was a wise move to distance yourself from mental wellness, OP. Too bad it wasn't further where your parents couldn't have tried to guilt you and call you names. My dad's side of the family pulled this all the time. I was the one always calling them, so I stopped. And then they got upset because I stopped reaching out. Do their phones not work? It's only a one-way phone. Or maybe it's like a walkie-talkie. You can only talk like one way at a time. Maybe that's maybe that's what they think it is. Maybe, maybe they just need some lecturing on modern technology. <laughs> I don't think that's the case, though. Was recently involved in a motorcycle crash. Parents are trying to waste their way into my case, probably to get themselves some type of money. To be clear, either send me the lawyer info or we will have to drop you from our insurance as we are getting bills. I'll leave it up to you. You do not need his information. If you would like to give me the contact info for United, I can give them a call. But I just confirmed this morning with my lawyer they have already spoken with United Health and sent over a letter of representation. Since you're refusing to give me information, I need to help you. I'm going to talk to mom about dropping you off our medical insurance. That would alleviate the stress of me having to do things to protect my insurance and would let you just handle everything on your own. Please let me know within the next hour or two what you're choosing to do. You're either going to give me the information I need or we're going to have to make a change. Thank you, son. This sounds... weird. You do not need that information, though, and he's asked me not to give it out, and yet again reassured me that they have his information and have spoken before. Which leads me to believe you have ulterior motives for wanting his information. Hence, why I'm not giving it to you. God damn, just calling it out straight on. I want to see where this goes. I'll be working to drop you from my medical insurance today. Since you're not helping me, there is no reason for you to stick my neck out for you. So there's a chance by the end of the day you will no longer have medical insurance. 
Uh, okay, if, if that's what you want to do. We'll consider your attitude is terrible towards us. And all we do is help you. Maybe it's time we stop helping you. The only one with an attitude here is you. I'm choosing to not let your negativity affect my mood or day. He told me he's spoken with them, asked me to not give out his information, and said he's handling everything. I've instructed the bomb to begin the process of removing you from our medical insurance. Cool. Sorry for the trouble it's cost having me on. Only problem is your attitude, son. And quite frankly, I'm done with it. I'm sitting here trying to help you, and I'm trying to help myself. But since you're not helping me, I'll be done helping you. It just sounds like a couple of bills were sent to the wrong address, doesn't it? Like, this is really weird. You literally cannot show one point in this text thread where I've had an attitude. It would be physically impossible. You want something, and I'm not giving it to you, per the instructions of my lawyer, and instead of accepting it, you're throwing a fit. That's on you. Solely. I have seen so many instances in which family stops being a family the moment money is involved. I don't have any advice since I've never been in this situation before, but I wish you the best of luck and hope your mom sees reason, OP. <sighs> mom follows dad's lead. Aw, oh, no. Nah. That is such like a cliche trope, though. It is astounding. I've seen that happen. I've seen a few stories about that when, uh, when there's a lot of money involved or there's a property being split or something like that and the whole family of like kids or, well, adult kids now, I suppose, just turn into freaking hyenas. It is amazing. Well, emotional support team, and at least we have each other, right? You will never try to be a hyena against me. <laughs> Please don't devour my emotions unless you want to warm them up. <sighs> That'd be so sweet, though. Maybe that's what it does. <gasps> Maybe it eats your soul, just cuddles it up, and then gives it back so it's all, like, fussy and nice. And Oh, my God, you're such a good demon. Yes, indeed, I would give you anything. <gasps> oh, my God. My alcoholic, abusive mother. I can't wait to never see her again. I am absolutely done with the lack of respect for myself, my home, and my belongings. Both of my jackets are gone. You continue to feel I'm here at just your convenience. You are not getting anything unless I have some time to not be totally furious. Don't contact me or come to my house. By the way, you are blah 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 blah. I'm not disrespecting you, I'm getting my stuff today. I don't feel like you're here for my convenience. The U-Haul is already rented for today. I haven't taken any of your jackets. I'll be there after 12. The street is closed anyway for waterline repair. I would have stuck to the 23rd if it wouldn't be a danger due to the rainstorm. Please stop texting me. I can't stop texting you because I need to know that me and my roommate and his friend will be there after 12 today. Sorry, no, the street is closed and I will not let you in. Okay, I'll have to call the police then, as I'm sure they will make an exception for us to grab my things. All I want to do is get out of your life for good. All you want is me out of your life. You're making this extremely difficult for how much you hate my behavior and me as a person. Here are pictures of the streets. Okay, I can park where that isn't happening. I'm grabbing my things today. This is a total disrespect and you expect me to do whatever you want. It's not happening. Do what you... All you have to do is open the door for 30 minutes and they will do all the job themselves. They will even rent the truck and they'll do all the carrying. Like, you don't have to do anything apart from just not locking the door. You're getting blocked. You're totally pissing me off. I am not disrespecting you. I am telling you that I'm grabbing my legal possessions today so I don't have to risk my life driving and moving furniture in the rain this week. This means I also don't have to speak to you sooner rather than later. Honestly, this just feels like a power move. Like, they want to keep mistreating you, but they keep some of your stuff kind of like as hostage. So they still have some kind of power over you. That's the way this reads, because if they genuinely just wanted you out of their life, they would make it as easy as possible for you to literally get further away from them. But I think this is more about the power move rather than like, them genuinely wanting you out of your life, so good on you for actually getting out of there. Explanation. I have been raised by my mother most of my life. She started drinking when I was 10 and it went downhill from there. Emotional, physical, and financial abuse for years. I was kicked out after my birthday after my therapist told my mother that threatening me was abuse and please not to. And now she is refusing to allow me to have my things. I'm diagnosed with CPTSD from all this, and the realization of just how bad she was to me growing up and the effects it has on me as an adult has led me to severe depression. I just want my furniture and to never see her again. I think that's a perfectly reasonable thing. She's just trying to hold on to the last of your things as a hostage. To still have some kind of power over you, to still make sure that you can't actually move on. I've seen that happen a few times where someone wants to move on, the other person keeps stuff hostage, and it becomes a whole freaking process to just get your stuff uh, back. And then, you know, you, you have to make a choice. Either you have to battle for your things, which can be very annoying, especially if it is someone that has this kind of hold over you that has already been a pain in the ass, that has a lot of power and it's very draining. Or you have to simply move on from your things, which is also not a very fun option. So good on you for sticking it out. 
and getting out of there as fast as possible. I do wish you the best of luck. My dad's late night drunken rambles. Oh, so now we're drunk texting our kids, not even our exes? <laughs> Great! You act like Blorp, bless her heart. Lol, that's one way to look at it. Ah, uh, facepalm. I am best teacher. I've drove drunk so many times. What? And so has your mom, lol. I am well aware. That, that's, that's a bragging, that's something you had up your sleeve. I am a really good drunk driver. It doesn't have like the braggy ring to it you think it does. That's the bad thing, fam. We had a power outage, so my dad went to get this food. My mom told me to go with him. A minute later, she said to stay in the house. She again told me to go, then texted me to stay. I told her that I would go with him. She acts like this, text, then wonders why I don't live with her. I am going with him. But, but I don't want you out in the cold. You're just getting better. I'm, I'm fine. You just told me to go with him anyway. GN, then I remember the car was far away. Never mind now. I'm just hoping to say anything. Either you or your dad. It's too much fighting. I can't. You guys do whatever you want. What I say does not matter. You only have one parent. If you ever need me, let me know. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. If you have not already, honey, just let dad see my messages to you. Are you a parent or like a dramatic 14-year-old? Jesus God. You only have one parent. Uh, uh, uh. When your child is more adult than you are... Time to reconsider some things. Mom. Son, a son who chose evil, wicked hearts. Grandma knows, and so does Jesus. Endless dad is a liar, not good. Better get it right with God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are the worst son I could have hoped for by liar. Come see me, liar. Anelas does this liar. Poor girl, her grandma knows her dad is a liar and spends times with liars. Poor baby, you're an enemy. Bye. Her great grandma knows you're a liar, and so does God. You will never hear from me again, son. You made your evil choice. <laughs> These people monologue like they're in a Disney movie, man. Come on. This does not feel like someone who's particularly stable. Um, and those kind of people are really exhausting to have around you because stuff like this happens. They just blow up randomly and go on these really big tirades. It is exhausting. Stacy's post. I hope someday they realize how hard I try and how piss poor their efforts are. <laughs> Any other parents out there are stunned on how confusing it is to be so rad and offer so much and have so moody, ignorant kids. Oh, you mean like completely normal teenagers that are just like doing teenagey things? <laughs> okay. I personally can't wait for the day they grow up enough to realize how ridiculous they look when rebelling against smiling for a photo with their forever providing adoring mother. After tonight, I want to smack them both and donate all their presents to kids who would appreciate them. Okay, so, so, okay, that, that's the all adoring giving mother who also longing after smacking their kids around. Okay, this sounds a bit contradicting, don't you think? Nothing makes me want to smile less than being told I need to smile. Me, when I turn to my parents for emotional support and all they do is to tell me that I'm too young to be stressed. One thing I always find staggering about things like that is for some reason, in some instances, both parties in families just seem to forget where the others have been. Like parents have been teenagers themselves. So they also know what it's like to be a teenager and the stuff that you can be stressed about. It's probably not the same things. You know, as a teenager, you're at least hopefully not stressed about like a mortgage or, you know, paying the next bill or that project at work. But it's different stressors and your body is going through changes and it's weird hormones and new things in life. And high school itself is a heckin' jungle. And maybe, you know, there are bullies there or whatever it might be. Or you're worried about a crush or you're going through your first heartbreak and all that kind of things. A lot of things happen. Teenagers can also be very rambunctious, of course, but I don't know. Some Sometimes in these situations, I just feel that the party just forgets what it's like, kind of. It's like, oh my god, they've just been at this age their whole life, and they have no way to relate to it, when, when that's actually not the, tr not the case. It's very strange. My mother has no idea why I won't respond after they kicked me out mercilessly. How are you today? Heart in Christ. Hello, can you please respond? Heart Christ. Hi, Blorp, it's mom. Please respond. Blorp. Hi, Blorp. Lots of hearts and flowers and crosses. Hey, what are you doing for Christmas? Please let me know. Love, mom. Can you please respond? What the frick? Come on. Oh my god. I, I kicked you out into the cold, but, but I've already sent you emojis. What more do you want me to do? The road to redemption is <laughs> paved with the <sh> emojis. <laughs> or maybe it's the path to hell is paved with emojis. Yeah, that's probably what it is. I thought you guys would enjoy a little update from my parents who kicked me out. Happy holidays, everyone. Oh, this is the next message. Merry Christmas. We hope the blessings of Christ's birth bring you joy and happiness throughout the new year. Love, mom and dad. Nothing like just randomly bringing up Jesus Christ when, when you kicked out your child. That ought to fix it.
Atta boy. Dad, I truly don't know why you're so impatient with your family, the Pierce. Treat me and your sisters the way you treat Belorp, other people you're around at school. Block my calls, texts, so I'm exhausted with your overbearing attitude. If we don't talk again, I'm also sick of your Kardashian demeanor. I've had my phone on Do Not Disturb since the movie, and while driving back, I was going to call you back until I read this message. I may come across as impatient because I'm choosing to no longer listen to conversations that drain me, for example, acting like a hypochondriac. I'm also choosing to no longer do favors for people while they disrespect me, for example, talking crap, then expecting me to drive them everywhere when they can't drive themselves. Oh yeah, nothing, <laughs> nothing says like, you owe me a favor because I talked bad at you before. My Kardashian demeanor comes from me learning that I have to stand my ground in order to be taken seriously in this family. I also think it's fine if we don't talk again. Anyways, thank you for the movie. I enjoyed it. Good night. That's a very, like, calm, collected response, honestly. I mean, it's hard to understand the entire context from this alone, but it sounds a bit overly aggressive. And sometimes with people in your life, you do have to stand your ground. You know, it, it's, it can be really tricky figuring it out, like the the balance of temper, so to say. When it's good to just like, okay, let this go and that kind of stuff, and when to stand your ground. Sometimes in life, in my experience as well, especially in the academy, I had the experience that sometimes it's just better to swallow your pride, because someone being complicated here, it's just a speed bump. And there's no point getting hung up on it. Just swallow it, get the thing done, move on with your life, because you will never look back on this anyway. At other points in your life, if you don't stand your ground, then you will be stuck there because someone is just going to repeatedly take advantage of you. So it is a very tricky, like, pragmatic balance to walk and know when to do what and what gets you stuck. But in this case, it sounds like you did the right choice. I have cut both my parents out of my life. Sometimes parents don't allow their relationship with their children to mature along with their children. Being a parent doesn't automatically make you correct or a good person. I'm going through the teen phase right now. I have it better than most as a parent of two young adults, 15 and 17. I've had frank conversations about how our relationships will mature as they become adults. Eventually, everybody involved would have the adult choice whether to be a part of each other's lives. I was not threatening them. I will always want all of us to be connected forever. I asked them to imagine how badly my parents behaved for me to cut them off. I'm doing my best to not only avoid the same fate, but to have the best relationship possible. How we treat each other today has a lasting impact on that choice we make every day to maintain our relationships. Their happy lives is a measure of my success in raising them. I'd rather they want to share their lives instead of them feeling some negative emotion when they see that the message is from me. That is really sweet. That is really sweet. Like, learning the worst lessons from, from other experiences in your life. Really sorry to hear you had to go through that, but it sounds like you're making the best from those experiences and making sure that it's not repeated further on in generations. That sounds really nice. Well, laddies, lasses, and lassos, I do hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed having you here, you beautiful bean. Have an amazing rest of your day, and I will see you in the very near future. Take care. Mwah.